Sleep, a blissful endeavor, a rest of peace. Although, I know that is not the case for all. Sadly, the darkness can envelop one's mind, making each sleeping night an ongoing hell. What? The, what, what? Why did you create me, father? Was it out of love? Selfishness? Or sick, demented vision of- No, actually, I just wanted someone to talk to you about video games. And that's about it. Wait, did you really just create me to make me a complimentary character on your channel? Yep. Don't really know why you're still doing all the creepy talk, though, but... It happens. I don't want to think about it. You know why? Because I have other things to think about. One thing. It's time. Those are my real glasses. To conquer. Conquer's bad for a day. Are you that much of a tool bag that you have a pair of sunglasses next to your bed? So let's just jump right into the review because it's a really, really, really great time. Also, I'll be looking at the Xbox One real replay version of this game because, well, my, uh, my Nintendo 64 left me. the first five minutes of gameplay you got the scarecrow huffing from a helium tank and i didn't even know this was a thing until high school i mean i knew you could like huff helium from like balloons but it's a very very different thing during the late 90s and even into the early 2000s rare was arguably the hottest game developer on the map i don't want to bore you guys with the things you've all heard about rare rare was legendary back then they made some of my favorite games of all time but i want to gush about arguably my favorite karting game Diddy Kong Racing. I mean, you could drive, fly, and boat around in races. The bosses in this game are also very amusing. I mean, I'm never gonna forget, like, going against the Triceratops seven times. Holy crap, I talk about dinosaurs a lot. But one of the coolest things about this game were the characters. Outside of Diddy Kong, these are all brand new characters. You got Timber, an adorable tiger. Pepsi, another adorable little mouse. There's a lot of adorableness in this game. And Bumper. Honey Badger, don't give a shit. But I always went with one character, Conker. Yes, Conker is in this game. In fact, this was the first appearance of both Conker and Banjo from Banjo-Kazooie, and Conker would eventually follow Banjo by starring in his very own 3D platformer. Granted, Conker had another game before Bad Fur Day, but we don't talk about that. Just, just don't talk about it. Just stop. Don't. Despite the success and praise that Banjo Kazooie and even Donkey Kong 64 brought with their collectathon platforming, Rare wanted to change things up when it came to Conker. Conker's Bad Fur Day went through multiple changes and originally was more similar to the likes of Banjo Kazooie than the cult classic it is today. But Rare wanted to shake things up, and boy, did they ever! They wanted to make a game that was mature, that had dark humor, sexual themes, alcohol, and so much more craziness. As Rare co-founder Chris Stamper himself said, when people grow up on games, they don't stop playing. There aren't games for people who grew up on their early systems. And he's exactly right. Instead of making another platformer that we all expected, Rare went on and they created a hilarious, entertaining game that I was unable to play because I mean, you see that right there? You see that? Hmm? You see that? My parents saw that M and they were like, nah fam, here you go, here's some Pokemon. I was like, well, 
You're right, I'll play Pokemon. This game is literally an adult Looney Tunes. The slapstick with dark humor thrown in there is easily the best part about this game. You never know what you're going to run into next, and there's so much personality in every single character you meet. Even the ones you meet for a few brief seconds. It's not like those normal NPCs are like, oh hey, help me find my cat or my purse. Nope. The ones in this game are like, I see you, I see little fella. You better get this fat ass bitch. You see that there? That character. It's outlandish and riveting. Drunk bees, this godfather weasel, jaws, big, big titty sunflower. Alien, literally. Nazi teddy bears, they're my favorite. I care more about these characters than anything from freaking Detroit Become Human. That's not a joke either. I actually legitimately care more about these characters than anyone from Detroit Become Human. Except maybe Mr. Krabs. The entire premise of this story is that Conker went out one night, ended up getting drunk, and he's hung over the next day while the king, aka Panther looking Panther, puts his glass of milk on a table and. So Panther's like, hey, Professor Von Cripplesack, fix this table. And Cripplesack's like, I'm a genius! Put a red squirrel here! And. and that's the story. Yeah, they need a leg for a table, and it's Conker, the end. Also, his girlfriend gets kidnapped, but literally Conker never knows about it. If you're someone who's easily offended, do not play this game. Seriously, nothing is off limits in this game. I mean, in the first world, their suicide jokes are crying out loud. It got so much crazier as time went on, but it does so in an entertaining way rather than just shock humor alone. I mean, sure, there's going to be moments where you're like... What the piss? But it's very well written and every world is full of amazing characters. Speaking of characters, there's, of course, the greatest musical number in all the freaking gaming history. Piss off, Guitar Hero 3's Devil Went Down to Georgia. No, we have this freaking beauty. Me, 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 me. I am the great mighty foo and I'm going to throw my shit at you. A huge supply of tish comes from my chocolate starfish. The chocolate starfish! Unlike the game's predecessors, this is not a collect-a-thon. I mean, sure, you have to collect all the money to complete the game, but it's not really hiding from you. This is a linear game that relies more on the comedy, the vibrance of the world, and the writing rather than exploration, even though it is nice to explore. Conker's Bad Fur Day likes to change up the gameplay from time to time as well. It'll go from 3D platformer to third-person shooter to freaking Sonic Adventure 2. The third person shooting in this game is freaking god awful, oh my god. Okay, look, listen. I understand that times were different back then, I understand you had one way to aim, but like, I'm using the right stick to try to move the aim, and I'm just strafing, and these zombies are freaking... Don't get me wrong, I love the innovation, I love the idea, but it just does not work. And the aiming is atrocious, I mean, you push Z and you're like, okay, I'm gonna look forward and hit stuff, but wherever Conqueror is, you're gonna stop right there and look wherever he's facing, and you don't wanna do that, and it takes forever to freaking turn... I hate, I hate, I hate the aiming. Okay, it's bad, it sucks, I'm... Go on to a happy subject. Every character in this game is voiced by three different voice actors. That's it. Chris Seaver, or Saver, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, I'm sorry, voiced more than 35 different characters. Luis Ridgeway voiced multiple female characters. And finally, Chris Marlowe was the great Mighty Pooh. Sweet corn is the only thing that makes it through my rear. How do you think I keep this lovely grin? Some parts are a little outdated, such as the Matrix and Saving Private Ryan parody sequences in the game, but if you've ever seen those movies, you'll definitely enjoy these moments. I know some of you guys think that pretty much everyone has seen those movies before, but I've learned to never assume that. I mean, I only ever saw one Star Wars movie, and that was Force Awakens, if you don't include the holiday special. <laughs> oh, that Jar Jar! So I sense a great disturbance of the Force. There's more? You gotta f uh, you gotta be pissing my nuts right now. There's more aiming and shooting. There's no there's no need for this. I, I would be fine with just you trying it out, but you're implementing it more and more and it doesn't work! This is my biggest gripe with the game, the aiming. Stop, D this is bad. This is making the fun time go bad time. It's still a good game in my opinion, but I hate this. 
This is honestly a terrific game that if you're into comedy or even platformers, you need to do yourself a favor and play this game. I can't recommend it enough. This was a blast to play, even with some walking controls at times, but I mean, hey, it's a Nintendo 64 game, it happens. The thing that sucks is we are most likely never going to get a real sequel to Conker's Bad Fur Day. While it's a cult classic with some great fans, Chris Seaver, or Saver, again, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, he himself has stated that it's highly doubtful that he and the original team would ever make a sequel due to, and I quote, I don't think we do a game that people would want because they want the original Conquer, but we're not the people to make that game. Ironically, because we've changed. My tastes have changed and I've moved on. You'd have a hard time getting it made now, so the only way for anyone to play it is to play the original because I don't think there's going to be anything like it again. I think that quote right there helps prove what kind of special game this is and how it's highly unlikely we'll ever see something quite like this game. It'll be rare, see what I did there, to have a game on this same level. My biggest concern is like maybe the new developer will rely too much on like shock humor, but that's getting ahead of myself. You need to play this game. Unless you're like easily offended then honestly don't pick this up because you're gonna be like, Sean I hate you. Or you might just hate me anyway, it happens. Please don't forget to subscribe guys, I really appreciate it, thank you all so much. For I'm going to kill you. Oh god.